you know, we, we couldn't make ourselves happy with our data. How, how could we ever make anybody other happy and, and satisfy their data if we can't even do it with ourselves? And yet that's what we feel, that that's what we commit to when we enter an intimate relationship, is we, we feel we need to comply perfectly to the other person's um, expectations of us. And we feel, of course, that they should you know, satisfy our wishes and, and needs and expectations. And so it, it is just doomed to fail. Really, it, it, it is. There, there might be the occasional relationship where the match between the data sets is so close, you could say, that it, it goes quite well. And, and I feel that our relationship was like that. We, 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 was, we didn't have a terrible relationship before being introduced to open intelligence. But, you know, there were many, there were many areas that, especially being two psychologists, we had a lot to talk about. And, you know, like, uh, and, and sex is just one of those things, you know, where at least, I mean, as a, I can only speak for myself, but where there are so many thoughts going on, is it the right day, is it not the right day? And then you wake up in the morning and, you really, you look, hmm, great day. But then you, hmm, now, okay, it's uh, got to go to work, and then what will the other person think, and is it the right day, what do I need to do? And, and there are all these, there's all this stuff going on, and then you maybe have the occasional great experience, or maybe many great experiences, but is, is the, the investment of all the thinking and all the you know, all the hope and fear going on around it, if, if you just compare that to the few moments of possible bliss and all the possible disappointment and then all those things and then before, during and after all the, you know, the thoughts, is it right, is it not right? And so just allow yourself some time to bring that all to rest. You're in the empowerments, I think, right? So just, just take this time, even if you're not in the empowerments, to get to know everything about yourself completely, in including your sexual desire, including your body. You know, you're uh, strong and, and capable enough to get to know yourself and, and just see how you feel about yourself. When, when, when you feel everything deeply, get to know all your thoughts. Uh, I love that in the talk yesterday that it's not about trying to conform to an idea of what open intelligence looks like, but really encountering all our daily activity, all our thinking, all our emoting, all our sensing, and then maintain open intelligence fiercely and directly while everything is going on. That is a very big difference to trying to comply to a certain set of instructions like no more sex or no more this or no more that, or to just allow, and of course that starts, and, and I loved how you shared that, and many people have that question, men and women, uh, like will I ever have sex again, because when I then rest deeply with the desire, then it just resolves, and, and what? <laughs> then, then, then you'll know, you know, just sex isn't anything different than anything else. You know, you, you didn't think about whether you wiggle your toes now or not. You, you didn't need to make a decision for that. And then when you rest, you don't, well, do I wiggle or not wiggle? And you'll just wiggle them or don't. You know, that's not the point. It's the same with sex. You just either wiggle or you don't. <laughs> but but that's, that's, you know, it, it, it becomes irrelevant in a way. But what you definitely get is complete stability within complete stability within so that you, if you then do decide to go ahead, you, there is complete enjoyment. And if you decide to just not go ahead, there is complete enjoyment. So you're free. You're, you're truly free. Not only free as an idea, but you're really free to make a choice. And that choice of, of being of benefit, it doesn't mean to like sit down and think, well, is it because, I mean, how would it be of benefit or not to have sex? I mean, what, you know, what, what conclusion could you come to? Or is it of benefit or not to have a walk? Or it, it, it's not that, 
it's like a cognitive process all the time. We spontaneously align with the beneficial intent of nature, in which everything happens spontaneously. And, and by aligning with that impulse to be of benefit that pervades all of intelligence, the, the singularity that is this cosmos, this intelligence that continually reconfigures itself to an incredible display. I mean, look at, look at everything, how beautiful everything is. Look at how beautiful you are. Look at how beautiful your partner is. And you know, when, when we see all of those things that we didn't like and that we thought we need to change, that they're actually the glow and shine of natural perfection, that an intimate relationship is the perfect place to discover that. I, I would say that for me that was the last place where I really had this 100% commitment. It's like coming home after a long day of work and then you think, aha, finally I can be myself. But then to truly be oneself means that we, and truly be honest, and you'll get to that in the empowerments, doesn't mean to then display all our data. But it means to really, to really enact our beneficial potency in, you know, in the relationship that is closest to us, that we feel is most important, and where we then feel we have the right to be what we then think just to be normal again. But normal really means to not be a victim of our data. And sex is really just a small fraction of that. And in, in the way this played out for myself was that I did definitely had to have the greatest commitment in, in, in the relationship with, with Kati because there, there just have been so many ideas of why I am in an, in an intimate relationship. And like if, you know, if you don't, if you don't make your point in an argument, then it means that you'll have a weaker position for the rest of the, and then you'll, it always, you're like if, I don't know, you, if you have an arrangement that you share doing the dishes, or you know, these little silly things in daily life, and then it's the day where the other should do the dishes and they aren't done. Now you would actually have time, the other person is, it completely has no time, but then, hmm, I could do the dishes, but then it means I'll always do the dishes because it's her day, her dishwashing day. And, <laughs> you know, just let all of that rest in your power of great benefit and see that really the purpose of a relationship is to bring service and love and care to the relationship. Not in a way where, and at least for me as a man, that was one of my pet points of view, my, my big points of view as I had to be the knight, the dark knight on the dark horse and the savior. And <laughs> so not, not that kind of disempowering, codependent type of service, but just the complete flow of love where you actually also know that the other person is empowered and they don't need you to be happy. You know, where, where it's not like a trade of I'll do this and then I'll be loved more or then they'll need me or they'll see how important I am in their life and all of those kinds of things. All of those thoughts probably come up if they had come up before, but we don't have to like, make our decisions based on them. I think the whole idea of learning uh, needs to be looked at in a completely different way uh, that subsumes the old way of learning. It's not, you know, that word subsuming, it, it took me a while to get used to that. Uh, it, for those of you who maybe aren't native speakers or aren't mathematicians uh, and know that from set theory, it means that you don't put something all the way. It's included and contained in the new way of doing things. It's subsumed um, in, a, in a more comprehensive order of intelligence. So, of course, you'll read a book, at least for now, our... our way as humans with those kinds of senses we currently have until we have chips all over. You know, if, if you just think of this whole room would have been filled with a computer that could add one plus one equals two a few decades ago. Today you have these like tiny devices like in your watch or uh, in, in cell phones that if, if it wasn't for the display they could be the size of a watch but it would be very impractical. But the processing power is so 
unfathomably high compared to the one plus one computer in the 40s. Um, that um, it, it's very obvious how we're going, but for now, our our mode of entering data into our own uh, search engine is mostly by reading and by using our other senses. So of course that's included. You'll you'll read a book and you'll talk to your students. But then what is what is the underlying idea of intelligence? What is a human mind? If, if you believe that your mind is a closed system and that you need to feed it intelligence and you need to feed it knowledge that is basically incomprehensible, then you'll have a very difficult time learning. But then if you look at your own experience when you re relax deeply, you know in any moment how to respond. Now you could call that that is without learning. You know, you're in, an, you're in an interaction with somebody. You don't need to learn anything about them. You don't need to learn anything about how to be. You, you just respond naturally, spontaneously, openly, always according to time, place, and circumstance. So already there you can see you don't need to learn that. You'll know moment by moment by moment on how to be. And the same is true for all knowledge. It's just that we have singled out some of that knowledge as being special knowledge. But of course, all the knowledge is already there. Where would it, where would it come from? Like uh, gravity was there before somebody discovered, wow, th there must be a force behind that because every time I drop it, the same thing happens. So they described it as gravity. But that doesn't mean that in all the centuries, millennia, and billions of years before, gravity didn't exist. So all knowledge is already present and, and we just learn to access it and to make it usable. But when, when the underlying mechanism of intelligence is clarified, then the learning just goes through the roof. And I can only share, in, like in my own experience, learning new things that I had no idea about. Um, it, it is a completely different experience. I, I remember one thing when I started uh, doing the website, we had a, a virus attack to the website. I did not know what a virus was. Well, I, you know, I heard about it, but I didn't know what it was. And somebody sent me a link and said, you need to check this page. There is a virus on there. I'm a, so I thought, all right. <laughs> and and I, I opened my HTML editor, and then I looked at the page. I looked at a couple other pages. It was just gibberish, uh, lots of numbers and symbols and, <laughs> and a little bit of text and then but then it was obvious oh yeah that this must be the virus the the malware and it was so you know by just if if you focus on all the tension in your head when you try to solve a problem then it's a very tight space and usually we just hop from one old solution that we've had to another but by just relaxing the mind completely then it is this vast expanse that is always clear and stable. We basically plug into the, the master frame, you know, the, the database that already includes and contains all knowledge rather than insisting of needing to transfer knowledge into our little hard drive. It's just a continuous flow. So the login and password are always short moments of open intelligence. You can crack any code with that login and password. And I'm sure you've seen that already just for yourself. And then to develop a training program, we'll definitely have completely different universities. You know, where learning happens in a very different way than we do today. And where the students are much more empowered than they are today in terms of contributing. And the, just the entire system is based on a wrong idea about what humans are and, and what the role are, what the role is that we all carry within that. <laughs>